Caboose, I don't know if we'll need a warning for this, maybe for your fandom and how much you'll geek <laughs> out. Uh, but can you give us a lowdown on Miles Morales and the experience on the PlayStation 5? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the, the first thing, of course, like since we've already touched on it, is the controller and the haptic feedback that you get from it. There is this little bit of resistance right at the end of your button press on the left and the right triggers. It feels pretty nice when you're swinging around the city or when you're doing like a point launch that you kind of have to put that extra bit of force and feel that that strength pulling at you to, to get that full swing in. Um, so that's a lot of fun. But I feel like the most impressive thing about the upgrade to the PS5 is the visuals and yes. specifically the ray tracing yeah. and 60 FPS. Uh, oh my God. Uh, ray tracing is cool, but let me tell you why I'm now only going to play performance mode for the rest of my time with the game because first of all 60 fps like the game is just glorious it's just glorious at 60 um through my playthrough i played the entire story mode on uh on performance mode pretty much except for like a few select missions that are like some really cool interiors that i wanted to see in fidelity um mm -hmm. but for the most part i played in performance mode i didn't notice any drop from 60 yeah. like it was a consistent 60 fps okay. and that's weird to me because i remember that the wording that they were using leading up to this was that it was a targeted 60 yes. so maybe there is a cut scene or two because i i know for sure in gameplay it does not drop like i yeah. know for a fact in gameplay swinging combat all that it never dips from 60 so maybe where it does drop is in cutscene, but I don't think it drops like anywhere below like 50 or 45 or something. Like, it's not a noticeable drop. I haven't, I don't remember any noticeable drop in frames through my entire playthrough. So it's super impressive there. And then also what is awesome. And this is why Insomniac, they're just, they're on another level as developers. When you go to photo mode, it automatically oh. switches to fidelity. Yeah. So nah, even if you're playing in performance touch. mode, yeah, even if you're playing in performance mode and you're let's say you're like you're you're wall crawling on a window and you're playing in performance mode, when you click photo mode, it automatically switches to fidelity. So you're going to see the ray tracing effects and all that. And for me that's perfect because that's the only reason why I like fidelity mode is because of the reflection that you can get yes. from photo mode and stuff like that. I mean, granted there still are some interiors that you play through that look incredible when you're playing on fidelity mode but for the most part i want my 60 fps and when i want to take take a cool photo i'll jump into photo mode and it automatically switches for me yeah. um another great thing of course is Whoa, the loading I, time. I need to stop. you're you're going let's I, we need to talk <laughs> about Whoa. how beautiful um spider-man is because that I mean, ray yeah. It is it is the perfect game to show off ray tracing because of the yeah. buildings um the reflections of like puddles and stuff mm -hmm. and oh my god that game is beautiful and i think PlayStation was smart in saying a targeted 60 because then you get those like, those, I'm going to do it, those nerds, those gamer nerds that are <laughs> oh, like, man. oh, your game drops less than a <laughs> second and into the Spider-Verse suit is less than 60 frames per second. Yes, we know that, okay? That's the beauty of the Into the Spider-Verse suit, okay? But overall, the game is really beautiful. I think that Fidelity Mode is one of the best things that i have experienced with miles morales especially taking photos like i don't think i've really taken any photos as much as i have in miles morales um mm -hmm. just because it's such, it's just so beautiful like how their photo mode is done um i think they, they did a little tweaks to it as well from uh, the original spider-man right. and i just think it's it's flawless yeah, yeah. no the game looks incredible top to bottom playing it on the playstation 5 you'll notice it even right away um when when you're in the loading screen or not the loading screen, sorry um the main menu when you're on the subway like you just yeah. see the upgrade in fidelity you know on like the, miles hair the the way he looks visually like all that stuff is upgraded they, and it just it looks so so good um another thing that's just awesome is the loading times of course uh you just you get into the game right away i even tested on stream literally going from end to end on the map through fast travel mm -hmm. and it was three seconds three yeah. seconds wow. from one end of the map to the other with fast travel it's three seconds that is That's insane amazing. now granted i don't really use i'm not i'm never going to use fast travel in spider-man never <laughs> and you should never <laughs> but, use fast but, travel in spider-man unless you're using it for the first time 
the the only times I, I will use it is if I'm like let's say I'm on my new game plus walkthrough or my new game plus playthrough and I'm trying to speed run some of the collectibles. Okay, that's fair. I just yeah. fast travel around the city and I'm like grabbing collectibles constantly. That it's just so convenient. It is so convenient, even for uh, for things like um, switching the time of day. When when you beat in the game, you get the option to switch the time of day. That takes two seconds. When you want to switch from fidelity to performance mode, it takes two seconds. All that stuff now, granted, like the fidelity performance, but that's not in the, the PS4 version. But when you switch the time of day in the PS4 version, there's a full on loading screen. You got to wait a second, then you're back into the game. You just erase all of that. And granted, in some cases, it lessens the uh, the hours you actually technically would log into the game. But like, it just makes the, the, the experience just that much better. So in terms of PS4, because like you mentioned before, you played on PlayStation 4 mm -hmm. as well as PlayStation 5. Other than the loading times, are the other enhancements like worth it? Would you say if someone, well, it's a free upgrade, I believe, for uh, Spider-Man, yes. right? Yep. Um, so if someone is waiting to play it on the PlayStation 5, do you think they should just wait? Or do you think she, they could get it for PlayStation 4 and then upgrade? Uh, I mean, listen, if you're one of those people out there who were hoping to get a PS5 so you could play Miles there and now you're like, do I even get it on PS4 or do I wait till I get a PS5? I still think playing on a PS4 is, is in my opinion, just fine. You're already used to loading times for your recent console generator. You don't like you haven't yet experienced the new stuff yet, so it's not going to feel like anything crazy to you. Um, and like, yeah, the, the fidelity upgrades are great. The ray tracing is great. The 60 FPS is great. But again... Because you've already played Spider-Man PS4 and you're used to the way that that game runs, it's going to feel similar and you're going to get like muscle memory from it. And you're just going to see sort of these subtle upgrades. And as well in the gameplay, you're going to feel all the brand new stuff that they introduce in Miles versus what they had in Spider-Man PS4. So I would still say it's worth it. I would say, in fact, I would almost recommend it because then if you play it on PlayStation 4, you have that experience. Then when you do get your PlayStation 5, you have an excuse to come back to the game. And I'm telling you, it will feel like a whole new experience. You want to play through the entire game again on the PlayStation 5. So I would recommend it. I would recommend it. I still think that there is enough to enjoy in Spider-Man Miles Morales that is outside of graphical mm -hmm. upgrades or loading time that you can have fun with if you don't have it on the, play on the PlayStation 5. Now, Malik, I knew uh, for some time we've been really excited about Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> did you get it for PlayStation 4 or are you planning yeah. to? So that was actually, I didn't know if I wanted to wait. I really, really kind of wanted to wait until I got the PS5 to play Miles Morales. But Caboose kind of convinced me to, to maybe think about getting into it. I don't know. Because, look, I feel a little attacked. I'm one of those people where <laughs> I have to go from 200 frames on my computer to 30 frames a second on my PS4. Uh, it really it really bugs me. It, it's it's a really jarring yeah. change. And so I think for an experience like Miles Morales, and I mean, this is just one of those things where it's like, Miles Morales is a big deal for me. And I, and yeah. I think it's a big deal for a lot of for sure. African Americans and a lot of people of color. And I, as weird as it may sound, I don't want that experience to be tarnished in any way by an older console because I have the original PS4 um, mm -hmm. from 2013. So it's it's a slug. It sounds it like an, it sounds like a jet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried it's gonna catch fire one of these days. But I think I might actually get it because it, I've heard so many amazing things. The game looks so good, and like Kabu said, when I do eventually get the PS5, I'm excited to see, and that would be a good benchmark test to see. Yeah. Okay, this is what this game is like on the ps4 versus what the ps5 truly has yep. to offer yeah yep. like yeah. i'm i'm tearing up just think of thinking of miles morales and you mentioned it like mm -hmm. i i never thought about it from the point if i didn't have next gen and i know that may sound like really selfish and pompous <laughs> but um it it means so much to me because when i'm playing miles morales like i was in tears for the first like 15 minutes of the game, just because I saw my nephew in it, I saw my cousins in it, it means so much. Yeah. And yeah. you do make a point, like you don't know if you if you haven't upgraded to next gen, if you want to kind of ruin that experience because you're not right. getting the full beauty of it. But I feel like whatever platform you are playing it on, especially if you are a person of color, it's gonna mean so much to you. I honestly highly recommend playing that game. Um, I feel like because that game is only like 13 hours with doing everything, I feel like you were going to, at the end of it, you're going to want more. 
you may yeah, feel right. like for myself, I kind of did feel like, oh, this was just a simple cop out to say they did Miles Morales, but they did it so well. So I know it's not that. And I know they're no. going to do more with Miles, but it just it just kind of aches because you want more of that experience that you don't yep. get. Um, just right. play the game. It is so it is so good. So honestly, well it just it, it perfectly encapsulates and and like very well accompanies the Spider-Verse film in the message that anyone can wear the mask. You know, like it's just, yeah. it's such a great representation of that message. And yeah, like the story is so good. And and you're right, Camille, like it's shorter. It's smaller than Spider-Man PS4. But I will say if Spider-Man PS4 didn't exist, if we didn't know all the content that's already in Spider-Man PS4, this would be a game I'm more than comfortable spending full price for. And it's mm -hmm. not full price. Like it's a $50 game. Uh, granted for Canadians, it feels like it's still a full price game. Um, but it's a $50 game. It's a bit of a, it's a discounted game. And that's because it's smaller than Spider-Man PS4. But I feel like it's still a full packaged game. You know, it, this feels bigger. Like the one comparison they kept drawing to was uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. And this right. feels significantly yeah. bigger than that. Yes, yes. Um, so, so I feel like this is for most people, I, I would say that this is like a full experience, a full story arc for the character, a bunch of alternate suits to get, side activities, side missions, all that fun stuff is in there. Uh, and it's even like, and then of course, in gameplay, the, the Venom abilities, the, the camouflage with the stealth, the, the traversal, the air tricks, it feels so much better yeah. to play than Spider-Man PS4. Like 10 times better. Yes. And I know this because I played through it and then I jumped into the Spider-Man remaster and I was like, I miss, I miss air tricks. I miss, <laughs> I miss, my, Ven I miss my Venom abilities. I like, why is Peter so boring, man? <laughs> like, do a, do a flip. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, I'm sure they'll improve on that in the uh, in the next game because the air tricks and something and stuff like that was very late implementation to Spider-Man PS4. But yeah, like I, I think it's it still really feels like a full experience. Yeah, I think. But also, oh sorry, uh, I was just gonna say too. I I like the idea of each Spider-Man feeling different if they continue right. on with the Spider-Verse in the series. Because if they did something like Spider-Gwen, either A, I would expect her to be super elegant or B, fall fully in line with that punk rock and make it a super jagged, kind of abrupt, aggressive swinging style. And the fact that they have the haptic feedback on the controller, which we're going to talk oh. about later, that they can actually give these characters their own personality and their own feeling. like. It seems like PlayStation going into this next generation, they're solely focused on getting you in these worlds and truly making you feel immersed. And and that's something that's really attractive to me over the, the Xbox. Because, yeah, it, it's an upgraded system for sure, but it doesn't feel like there's all these little extra things that are, that are catered towards me. Because I look at my PlayStation as kind of a, a movie going experience almost. You know, sure. you got like God of War, Last of Us, There, there's all these great triple a games and i'm not gonna you know boot up my ps4 to go play call of duty i think that they're kind of really recognizing where their audience look the last call of duty i played before modern What's warfare was that? ghosts <laughs> oh well that was just a bad call of duty yeah, so. that, that was the last one for me <laughs> but no not not dissing anyone who's gonna no, go play know, call of duty know, it, but it's just it's really cool to hear caboose talk about all these little extra features that go beyond the game things that wouldn't be possible without these new features of the ps5 right. yeah and to really make miles morales kind of stand on his own with the new generation yeah. too I, I can't wait to see if they do something with haptic uh, feedback and like making, if they do expand the Spider-Verse, how that would feel and look like. Uh, but I do want to get to uh, something that Arkham Red, actually two things that Arkham Red in chat said. Arkham Red said, <laughs> okay, cough, cough, Spider-Man 20. 99 game yeah, yeah that would be awesome there you go yeah that'd be that really be cool awesome. um and overall the game is or he believes that or she believes that spider-man miles morales deserves game of the year what do you guys think about that statement i'd That's say pretty cool. mm, i'd say it, it, maybe it could be nominated uh should it win i don't think so uh it's not my personal game of the year that still goes to Tsushima um still my still my game of the console generation um but at least for the playstation second. the playstation for xbox one generation that is mm -hmm. um but i i honestly i wouldn't 
I wouldn't be opposed to Spider-Man Miles Morales getting nominated. I think it's no. it certainly should be a contender. Yeah, I, th I think it should be uh, nominated, but I think 2020 has been such a great year for games. It's just really mm -hmm. hard to say, like, which should be game of the year, like, or or with any accolades. It's It's been a year, so I, I'd have to mull on it a little more. I think, uh, for me, looking from the outside in, kind of this year, I look at three games in terms of inclusivity uh, mm -hmm. at, like, different levels. Mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the lowest level you can play as a female <laughs> or a male. Like, it's a basic swap out that they do. I look at Miles Morales, where they do a lot of things right, but there's some little things like the Jordans. We won't get into that. It's still a sensitive <laughs> subject. There's some little, there's, there's just a couple little things that they're missing with the culture. But then there's Ghost of Tsushima, where they do such a, an amazing job of deep diving into that, mm -hmm. into that heritage and that culture and, and historical things that yep. have happened. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Ghost of Tsushima still deserves Game of the Year just because of the extra care that Sucker Punch put into that. But I wouldn't be able to. It made me want to look. It, it may want to learn more about that yeah. world, about oh, that time sure. period, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and especially like in researching more about that world in that time period, it made me realize like how accurate they were trying to represent yes. that, oh, for especially sure. with the samurai and the code, like yeah. mm -hmm. being honorable. It, it was a very important thing back then. And that's a huge subject that they tackle in Ghost of Tsushima, which I think is it's super interesting. It's super mm -hmm. interesting. The idea yeah. of being honorable to your core or to do whatever is necessary for the greater mm -hmm. good. It's like mm -hmm. such a nice, like such a cool moral dilemma, a big tug of war that happens in the story. And it's one of these games where I keep hearing people say like, oh, I couldn't get into it. The the, the main character is too one note. He's too stoic. And I'm like, no, that's that's purposeful. That's intentional. Like you got to look up how this stuff was and how, how yes. these people were back then, you know, and that's that's what they're trying to do. That's what they're trying to go for. Um, and maybe, you know what, if that doesn't work for you, I understand. But for me, it just, it completely succeeds in all facets. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of games that uh, definitely are contenders for Game of the Year. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two mm -hmm. uh, is definitely one of them. I think Spider-Man Miles Morales should be nominated, but maybe this is a discussion we should table. And when mm -hmm. we talk about Game of the Year, we, we bring up all those good points again and uh, mm -hmm. dive deeper into it. For now, though, um, we're going to take a quick break. I know that some of you have had questions in chat. We're going to bring them back when we talk about the controller um, after the break. So we'll be right mm -hmm. back. 